Okay. All right. Here we go. destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, Fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, Endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. When you, chief of humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you were wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free from dust, matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector, endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, field of ocean-like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning to the Dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, well abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the straight Sangha, to all three ever devout homage. To all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous actions. Accumulate virtue and goodness. Support your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning and clouds, Look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. 
I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. Take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha by the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma. May I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala together with other offerings and wealth and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. O oh, my masters, my idams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting these out of your boundless compassion, please send forth waves of your blessings. Idam Guru Ratna Mangdalakam Nirtiyami. The Heart of Perfection, Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate to the Iowa Triple Gem. <laughs> Thus did I hear at one time the Bhagavan was dwelling on the mass of vultures mountain on Rajagriya, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomenon called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of Buddha, the venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, how should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara said this to the Venerable Sharivadiputra, Shariputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, the emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no I element and so on and up to and including no mind element and no consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance and so on and up to and including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom. 
the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth, since it's not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared. Tayata, gati gati, paragati, parasam gati, bodhisattva. Okay, 21 to yourself. Okay. Shariputra, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, should strain in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that, it is like that. We should always practice perfection, perfection of wisdom of you have indicated, even the Tathagas rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the venerable Sharivadi Putra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the worlds of gods, humans, Asuras, Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised. That's spoken by the Bhagavan. To fulfill the needs of all beings at their various levels of understanding, we request that you turn the wheel of Dharma, including the lesser, greater, common, and extraordinary approaches. Okay, the big test. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Dark saying, okay, Pennsylvania. That's great. <laughs> All right. So, uh, when I start a practice, I like to look at um, a metaphor, like even if I'm in the lodge, <laughs> so to speak, looking at the mountain, I like to look at the summit, right? So um, in a sense, we start from this completely uh, open uh, awareness that has no center or edge, uh, completely uh, primordial awareness or the blissful, um, filled wisdom mind, as we'd say in Kalachakra, right? So uh, actually, that's our foundation. We start there. Um, uh, and uh, I want people to keep that in mind, that um, even if we're not always in contact, it, it's always there, right? So um, for those I've been hanging in there with Buddha Dharma study program and read Uttara Tantra Shastra um, 
it's an unending continuum, always there, whether we're um, in touch or we're or not, right? So our training and practice is to familiarize ourselves and become our friendly, make uh, friends with our uh, Buddha nature and uh, dwell uh, in a two truth. So we see the relative as the relative and the absolute as the absolute. And we see that they're um, in harmony, just like uh, the metaphor, like there's two rails on a train track, right? And we can ride on the rails. So relative truth is whenever we're saying, I'm gonna do this, or I need to reflect on this. Um, <clears throat> when the relative truth gets uh, stuck and made into too solid, then we suffer, right? So that's why I, I use metaphor of uh, like hand, if the hand's in front of the face, you know, uh, then it's a problem. So in our tradition, we don't cut off the hand. <laughs> All we're saying is just like, okay, you know, if you want to see your hand, if you want to see relative truth correctly, you know, you have to move it maybe with my eyesight, maybe, you know, 12, 16 inches that way, then I can see lines. So we're seeing relative truth correctly. Then if we want to see uh, absolute truth, you know, completely open, then we want to move it a little bit this way, right? But we don't have to move it way back here, right? You know, we can just kind of go, okay, here's hands, you know? So we're both seeing relative truth, like I've got to do this, I've got to do that. I'm thinking this, I'm thinking that, I'm reflecting on this, I'm reflecting on that. And then we also see absolute truth, complete non-reflective open awareness, just open, doesn't have to have object, right? And then, we can see like, oh, relative and absolute actually manifesting from uh, the same source, right? Like we'd say, um, using kind of Dzogchen terminology for, you know, both samsara and nirvana, relative absolute truth arising from the same source, right? So um, when uh, people are advanced enough or want to take the plunge. I'd like, you know, meet people in darshan or in daily life. Show me that source, right? Show me the source. So not talk about it or say, I saw the source um, last year somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, where is it now, right? Right now. Um, um, so sometimes uh, uh, I have the privilege in professional life doing couple therapy. Um, <laughs> so um, uh, you know, sometimes, usually, one partner will say, uh, "You, you, you never say, you know, you never say you love me," and then. I wait one one thousand two one thousand <laughs> and uh like you'd you think about it like what would you say some people answer well you know i love you well some people say i told you before i love you <laughs> uh you know some people say i do love you and some people might actually like give their squeeze their partner hand or give a hug, right? Haven't we all manifested those different things? Which one seems to be the most effective? The last one, right? <laughs> so um, generally, in uh, when uh, the absolute and the and the relative world uh, are in harmony then um, our actions and our words, you know, correspond, right? <clears throat> so um, the absolute world, uh, if 
we divide it a little bit would be like the show me world, right? But we can't always just show, you know, like you might be remote now, many people are listening now. So, you know, sometimes we just have to say it, right? We're just on a video call or FaceTime or something. So we have to say, yeah, I love you, you know, like that. Um, but uh, ideally, because uh, the nature of us human beings is talking, you know, that we can harmonize the show me world and the descriptive world at the same time, right? So we can talk about it and do it at the same time, right? Usually, however, they alternate, you know, unless we're talking about it and then we do it, and then we talk about it and do it, you know, we stand back, we analyze, you know. <clears throat> And um, after doing master's degree work at Europa in the 70s, I was totally like in my head. <laughs> so I thought, you know, a friend of mine is doing woodworking. So, you know, maybe that'd be really good, good mindfulness exercise, right? <clears throat> so, you know, the relative truth is uh, we're measuring things, you know, they say measure you know, twice cut once or something, right? <clears throat> so, and then cutting the absolute truth, like you're engaged. I mean, that's it. Once you made the cut, <laughs> you know, you're committed, right? You could stop in the middle, but you still get it, right? So with me, even if I measure three times, somehow the board sometimes would be too short. How did that happen, right? So I didn't have much as good a connection with relative truth. So sometimes, usually in the, the path aspect, of course, is usually we're alternating, uh, you know, relative truth, you know, uh, mind is in front of us, the Buddha is in front of us, we're having thought in front of us, there's a me having a thought, that's all relative truth, there's a me thinking I'm enlightened, that's the truth, relative truth, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so, but uh, as, uh, you know, the practice becomes more intimate and subtle, then, uh, you know, they go together, right? Like that, like they kind of come, like a mandala, go together, or, you know, here's the church, here's the steeple, and then here's the people. <laughs> we should have that, we should have that special mudra, don't you think, you know, <laughs> we learned that as kids, you know, like, there is a mudra, like, you know, they're almost like, there are thousands of mudras, you know. There's, of course, there is one like this and all kinds of, I don't, I don't know, you know, maybe we could research, is there, is there one? That, probably there is, you know. There probably is just one that I got. <laughs> so, you know, I wanted to give, like, just overview on, you know, absolute relative truth and actually what we're trying to do, right? So we want to work out a balance so... You know, then, you know, when we're alternating, we're not, you know, then we're in harmony. And then also eventually uh, our lives um, feel like we're, uh, you know, we use the term on track. So the two rails and then, you know, our, our energy runs on these rails, right? So it feels very energetic. Um, we're not in conflict, right? Usually we're a little bit like this, or we're alternating, which is still a wonderful feel. Even alternating, nice. You know, okay, do a little shamatha, then do a little zogchen, and then back. You know, blah blah. But eventually, it just feels like you're, you're tracking, right? There's this flow, very very blissful feeling, so like that. So, am I am I making sense out there? Yeah, it's making sense, yeah. <clears throat> so it is important to do some study to um, clarify our minds so that we can be skillful bodhisattvas and be skillful in relative truth, right? So, uh, you know, if somebody asks for directions, like, how do I get to San Francisco? Um, we could say something really, you know, just drive west. <laughs> but it, it'd be be nicer to say, oh, you know, um, why don't you just look on 
Google Maps or something, or you know, or maybe even I'll drive with you, like that. So uh, the uh, precision um, of understanding relative truth and how relative mind works is very helpful. Uh, it's it's particularly helpful uh, when people get really, um, you know, really turned around, right? Um, particularly if they're not, um, uh, you know, like they don't even know what road they're on, right? So you can say, oh, okay, this is how the kite string got messed up. Doesn't it? Doesn't it's not helpful just say your kite string's messed up. <laughs> it is a little bit, but then. You know, we have to like painfully, slowly untangle it, right? Like that. You can't, uh, unfortunately, I mean, we use the term, you know, cutting through sometimes in Dzogchen, but it, it doesn't literally mean like you're, you know, cutting off your hand or something. It means something else. <clears throat> so learning how the mind works to like uh, how it must work logically or must work from explanation and study, how it must work logically doing debate, how it must work in Abhidharma, and even you know, using term, you know, using benefit of Western psychology, then we can help people kind of, you know, analyze means to like uh, loosen, loosen the kite string, and then absolute truth, then you can like um, Mary Poppins, then you can go fly your kite, right? <laughs> but uh, in our tradition, um, we uh, we try not to like I don't know we anybody's had kids done kite flying, so it gets tangled, right? And then you want to kind of go, <laughs> and then you take out your scissors and you cut it and you. Do a little nod again, and that's kind of you know okay. Um, that's a lot of relative practice, but after a while, then you get in the habit. You have too many knots anyway, and you can get too heavy for your kite, right? It's a shortcut, right? Some people just go, "I'm just going to cut this person, this thing, this emotion, this thought out of my life. I'm just going to cut cut them out, cut them out," you know. Sometimes that's necessary, you know, like, you know, people are drinking and drugging, they're hitting their head against the wall, they're doing all kinds of things, self-harm, cutting, you know, um, and uh, you, you, sometimes you just you know, so cut it out. You know, just, but if we just do that with every single thing, then um, we have a lot of knots in our kite string, and it, then it does get too heavy, it won't, it won't lift. That makes sense, right? So at some point we have to say, okay, I, I know it's going to take time, but you know we're just going to have to like do this, right? Okay. So a really slow, gentle analysis, pulling apart with a very complicated kite string, is like that's Kala Chakra. <laughs> and we all go, it's so big, you know, and I go, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it gets you to slow down, doesn't it? You know, like, okay, you know, if you say, okay, I'm going to take a tour of the Kala Chakra Mandala, um, there, there's a lot to see, you know? Like, um, so there are some big museums I've been um, in, right? So maybe, I don't know, I've lost track now. Was it four years ago? Went to France, went to the Louvre. Who's, who's been to the Louvre? <laughs> did you see it all in one day? <laughs> was it frustrating or did it kind of go, well, that's cool. I can come back and I can see more, you know? So everyone has to see like Nike, right? Up the hallway, you know, the, the stairs, you see Nike and, uh, you know, everybody like now tries to see Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa behind plexiglass, a million people just there up there. Like <laughs> when I was a kid uh, in New York, like Mona Lisa came to the Met 
you could just walk right up to it. Amazing, right? It was just like, you know, one of our little, you know, strings there, you know, little guardrails. There was, you know, oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. So Kalachaka is very big. So I don't expect people like, you're not, you know, just, you know, quick tour, right? So you kind of go, this is really great. I, I get to visit it a lot and I'll see something new every time. So that should be a metaphor for our lives. You know, it's not a snapshot, right? It's not like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take this. Here's a selfie in front of the Louvre or here's a selfie in front of, you know, uh, Petit Trianon or, you know, something like that or Versailles, you know, no, we, you know, you go, oh, great. It's gonna be there. I get to see more next time like that. That's uh, our approach to life. That's life is complicated. So we can go, okay, well, I'll get to see, you know, something, but I'll have to wait for it. Like our death and go, great. You know, I'm not in a hurry necessarily, right? Unless we're real depressed and suicidal. We're not, not in a hurry, but we, we'll get to have that, that tour at some point, right? Is anybody in a hurry right now <laughs> to see that door? <laughs> Death, you know, like that. So, so the color chakra is like, you know, visiting the Louvre or something. I don't know, what's another uh, big museum? I don't know. New York, the Frick. Anybody been in the Frick? That's big too, right? Yeah. So, so we like, you know, those kind of wonderful spaces. Um, but even Kala Chakra is learning how to like um, drive in, in New Delhi or something. You know, that's huge, right? There's no way you could go to every street in New Delhi. Though I've heard like, um, I've never driven in Mexico City or Cairo. Anybody driven in Cairo? I talked to somebody who came back from Istanbul how many people do you think live in Istanbul? Any guesses? 25, 30 million. <laughs> we are in a small town. We're, you know, like, this is not Tokyo. This is not, you know, Cairo. This is not New Delhi or Mexico City. Anybody driven in Mexico City? Yeah, big. So, um, Kalachakra is very much interested in uh, a big vision. You know, mostly I, I, I can't even memorize all the streets in like Carmichael. <laughs> you know, like that, you know. So if you get a child to dra draw the, their kind of mental map, I'm sure like some people have had that experience, you know, they'll draw their house real big usually and then little streets, you know, we'll draw what's important that. So Kala Chakra is really preparing us, you know, for like, okay, this is, this is the whole world. This is really big. Yeah, it's complicated. And we know that. So it's going to take time, but we're also going to teach you how not to freak out. Actually, first time I drove in like LA, I freaked out. <laughs> and last time I drove a long time ago into San Jose, did, um, Maybe uh, you were there, Susan. Demna Locha Rimshay gave a teaching on Tara. I don't know. <clears throat> I think I got lost in San Jose. Is that easy? I think it's easy to get lost in San Jose, isn't it? What's with it? What's with that place? You know, <laughs> there's no way to easily get off, you know? But then I remember, okay, that's fine. I was just thinking, well, this is Kala Chakra. This is big. You, you can't drive off. You know, we always, it, there's no edge to the planet. It's spherical, so you can't drive off of it. So eventually I could get back on to, um, what is it, 680 to come here or something like that. <laughs> Early, so that was that day, but Demolochirimshe after um, doing it, I, Yamantaka was in the middle of the week. Maybe some of you have done this, like after work you thought, I'm just gonna, drive to the Bay Area and do this thing. Has anybody ever done that? Like, okay, I'm gonna drive from Sacramento to San Jose in rush hour after work. 
then I'm going to do this ceremony, which starts around nine o'clock, and then I'm going to drive home, you know, at midnight. It was so bad, I, I got lost again, and had to pull over and I was just kind of crying by the side of the car. That's when I was hoping the cops would come, you know, they didn't. So, anyway, so Kala Chakra, you know, gives us like, of course, we know it's complicated. Yeah, life, you know, our lives, particularly here, is, is like driving in, you know, New Delhi or something. They look like there's streets, or they look like there should be a side of the street, but everyone's, who's driven in New Delhi? It's like this. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's like, yeah, no, it's like this. Like people just coming at you like this, you know? So, <laughs> so you know, we, we in Kalachakra and Kalachakra, Dzogchen, Mahamudra, we, we have moved beyond, you know, I, I just want the lines nice and straight. I, I just want to live in Carmichael. I, I just want to, you know, have it, you know, everything lined up, right? That's very nice, but you know, um, I, don't, I don't know if it works that way, right? Sometimes I like it that way, but Kalachakra is saying we're going to teach you how to drive in, you know, Cairo. <laughs> I never, I don't want to drive in Cairo, it's something like that. So that's kind of the view. So yeah, there's a reason it's very complex. The, the, the mandala and the big one, you know. So we have Kalachakra mandala here, and now we have, you know, Kalachakra central uh, Buddha there. So, and then we have Kalachakra mandala on the back. So we're making kind of a, a lion's are really like, yeah, we, we know it's complex, we get that, and we're here to train you, um, you know, in real life, because all our lives, everybody in this room, everyone, uh, tuned in remotely. Um, very few people say, my life's simple. If they say it's simple, then there's still a conflict, right? So the idea is um, to how we combine the complexity of the samsaric world and the relative world with the simplicity of absolute world. It's easy if the relative world is very simple, right? So sometimes we have to do that. Sometimes we have to do, we're, we're gonna simplify our lives. We're gonna go to the cave. Uh, we're going to you know, take refuge. We have to do that. Something has to simplify to start with, right? So when people just say, well, what am I gonna get from Kala Chakra or Dharma practice? I have to remind them, that first thing you're gonna get is what it's feeling to lose something you don't need. And that's most of Dharma practice. We have much more than we need, but we have to deal with people and institutions that you know, uh, create a lot of complexity, isn't that right? And then we get addicted to it ourselves. So when we finally have time to just sit quietly, um, we think, well, that would be great, but then that complexity comes roaring in, right? So in our practice of Kala Chakra, we're practicing clarity in the midst of traffic, right? Mental traffic. So I'd like to stop here for a moment and, and see if I'm making sense or there's some uh, comments or questions or discussions. Hi, Lama Singh. Does this work? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you for your talk. Um, I'm wondering how, you know, yes, the Kala Chakra is huge <clears throat> and complex, but where does, I feel this urgency to become enlightened as quickly as possible yeah. in this lifetime. And, but we, I, I feel like I don't want to go in there and get lost inside the Kala Chakra Manza <laughs> because it is so huge and complex. Mm. In my, how does the urgency 
fit into that huge complexity? Uh, the urgency um, becomes like getting started, which you've already done, you know, and then um, maintaining a, a consistency of training and practice. That's the turtle piece. So, you know, we even if we have to pull over and cry a little bit, you know, we, we get back on the road, you know, like that. So, um, you know, the, the urgency is, is basically not, um, you know, not giving up. So time is going to carry us anyway, right? We're, we're going to progress through our life stages anyway, correct? So, um, you know, actually, we can either go along or be dragged. Which one do you want? <laughs> so, um, you know, the urgency is like, you know, I'm willing to go along and harmonize with the different developmental stages that I'm going through and uh, be in harmony with it. Knowing that still is somewhat of a dialectic, right? You know, because um, we're still going to a little bit go like this, right? You know, until, you know, until, uh, you know, uh, you know, the path of no more learning, fifth path, right, no more learning, or um, like, a, and uh, uh, do Jim Ling Bez, you know, tax Buddhahood without meditation, right? So, <laughs> uh, you know, um, that's always kind of seductive, right? So people go, oh, I'd like to read that book. <laughs> of course, that, that means that you, you're, you're already running on the two rails. But the, the consistency of the bodhicitta is what counts. Yeah. Thank you. Sir, please, Dirk, if you have something. Sorry, I did not uh, hear that that's what you were saying. Uh, of course, Buddhahood without meditation is very different than it sounds like by the title. <laughs> but <laughs> I was wondering if uh, maybe uh, on Monday nights when you don't teach, maybe we should start doing the Kala Chakra, practicing the Kala Chakra text that uh, you just distributed at the Jainan. Yes, I think that's a good idea. And also I was going to suggest that when I'm here, I can do Kala Chakra after lunch. So, you know, the, um, the text we got with the Jainan is, is um, you know, relatively short and uh, especially translated for us, uh, six Panchen Lama. So um, that would be great, actually, like that. Um, and we should, uh, you know, have uh, doing uh, mantras and then, then rest in nature of mind, right? And then do closing, right? So not just, not just run through it, but also you know, kind of, okay, now we, now we just sit, right? So that would be great to do. Um, then we're doing it, um, you know, every week like that. That's a good idea. So this the text we have especially, especially translated for us, right? <laughs> um, so that very, very auspicious. I asked Jada Rimshay, said, you know, uh, some people. Uh, we're able to do um, the six session Guru Yoga, Kala Chakra Guru Yoga Jainang like 10 years ago, and we've continued that. But, um, you know, it doesn't look like you're doing that again. And some people don't have uh, like time for that, right? Because that takes a while. Even if you don't do any meditation, it still takes time, right? So please do something even more concise. So he granted this. I think it'd be, um, uh, you know, uh, useful to for the people that have had the Jainang for Kala Chakra Six Session Guru Yoga to continue doing that, 
Um, uh, but for the people that have just had the Jinang for the Panchen Lama's text, let's just stick with that, right? Because that's you know, for more people broader, right? Like that, it makes it very simple. Um, <clears throat> so uh, in Kalachakra form, that you know, though they're slightly different. So we're doing slightly different, uh, same Kalachakra, but. Um, little different versions and different times, I think that's helpful. Don't you? So thank you, Dirk, that's a good idea. And I think the Kala Chakra Succession Guru Yoga is still like, Alan's doing maybe 2.30 or 3.30 Wednesdays, a couple times a month, yes? I don't know. Yeah, it, it's Alan, it's not just me. It's, there's a pretty big group of us now. It's 2.30 on Wednesdays right. every week, essentially. Yeah, so please continue doing that, right? Um, so you know, I told Rimshay, okay, we're 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 gonna be we're gonna be doing more Kala Chakra. <laughs> Lama, may I follow up on that yeah. uh, question and what you've said? Yeah. So the Lions who are folks that are, that did the Amatayas initiation can join that afternoon six session. It correct is that correct? Yeah, yeah if, if uh, but um, I'd like then you know, like we we haven't gotten the explanation on it, you know. So, um, if people um haven't done any Kala Chakra yet, you know, I actually prefer if we start out shorter first, right? But uh, you know, still okay to attend, right. But there's there's a lot in in the six session guru yoga, lots of detail, right? So um, I I need to come on more often, and give a little commentary like that. So I'll do that too. Um, you know, I'm just, uh, so when we're doing the uh, the combined uh, guru yoga, then um, uh, we're we're in a lot more detail, don't you think? But, uh, well, you're used to it now, but <laughs> so, um, but uh, for people that have had like, um, definitely have had the full Kala Chakra uh, empowerment with Dalai Lama, um, then, uh, you know, doing also succession guru yoga, uh, you know, when we're, you're doing internationally there too, that's fine, right? But um, uh, it might be easier to start a little bit simpler and then work up. We'll see. Usually, so it, you know, it sounds like Lama. If people have questions, they should just ask you. Um, I guess that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, but um, you know, uh, uh, Dalai Lama has been, you know, very. Uh, um, you know, it says, you know, please, if you've had this Kala Chakra through um, other, you know, lineages too. So he's been very open, right? So when some people went to Washington, D.C. or when I did Kala Chakra in Toronto um, years ago, or when I did Kala Chakra with um, Kirti Rinpoche, you know, they didn't say, like, stay in this box, right? <laughs> And just said open, just just practice and do world peace like that. So that's that's our approach. Um, I think the Jonang teacher that um, Kensho Rimshe, right, a little, a little bit more tight. You know, doesn't want wants to kind of keep it in the box a little bit more. Um, so that might be a you know, even though a few lions or people have done that, then um, you know that that feels a little too tight for me, right? You know, from my side, you know, it'd be nice to say, okay. So, um, if we're doing Kala Chakra with me as a teacher, then I should be, I should know what other people are doing for Kala Chakra, right? So, some teachers have said, like Kendra Ramshe, so if you did Kala Chakra with me, don't share it with anybody else. And then it becomes kind of a problem, right? Um, because then, you know, you start bifurcating your practice. So, None of my teachers have ever said that, you know, that 
I respect, you know, just said, um, if you have, uh, if you're working with a qualified teacher and they can be of help, be of help, right? So, you know, and, and, you know, if people said, you know, I want to um, have a good motivation, bodhicitta and strong practitioner, like, I want to see what's going on that, you know, uh, with qualified people like um, Jim Hare and, uh, you know, Mio at um, Mountain Streams, uh, then fantastic, right? You know, genuine. If I want to teach with this, study with this, you know, then, then genuine, right? I'm not tight, right? Like that. Just you want good teaching. So I'm not here to build an empire, right? <laughs> or restrict. So, um, you know, years ago, so uh, uh, when um, I was studying Zogchen with Choji Rinpoche now in, in Denver, he says, oh, you know, like, uh, um, is, you know, uh, his home is Panarimpoche is in town. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so a few of us uh, drove down for a private audience um, and practice with Panarimshe. So uh, Chote Rimshe says, well, you know, uh, you know, he got down, did, uh, maybe you don't know, Panarimshe was had, uh, an incredible teacher, head of uh, the Nima school, so to speak, although not really, you know, not, not like Pope, but you know, like that. So he, gave, you know, gave Kala Chakra Mantra and Rajasattva, you know, very powerful, right? Like that. So there are different lineages, but, um, um, you know, Pema Narbarim Shea didn't say like, okay, now, now you can't do this, right? Now don't share, just open, right? So that's, that's the best, right? Otherwise- Mama? It, Mama, could I could I uh, speak um, about Kentro Rinpoche a little? If you put if you put too much closer, then um, uh, it's difficult, right? Constrict, so we like to be free. So if they're call, qualified teachers doing Kala Chakra, then um, then it's very helpful, right? But if you make it too boxy, then then it's not helpful. Mama, I, I attended Kentro, Kentro Rinpoche's teachings, and I yeah. did not understand him to say that we couldn't do other things. Oh, good. The only, re the only restriction that he specified was that we couldn't share the text that he gave us for the initiation. Yeah, good. So he said you could, you could share, you could share. It, it, it was teachings. specifically the initiation text. It's not uh, like the, it's, it's, it, which, which, which was this groundwork, which gave us all of the images for the entire he, he just doesn't want us to pass that around. Yeah, that's good. He's not restrictive at all. In fact, he was very open. I okay, good. I, uh, from, you know, and that's I've good. also taken teachings from Kendra, from Pina Rinpoche, and yeah. they seem very comp comparable to me in their That's in their good, attitude. that's good. Okay. Yeah. yeah, thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, likewise, we say if someone hasn't uh, done you know, we have to be careful, like if they don't understand a certain text or haven't been, you know, gotten a commentary on it, generally in Vajrayana, you just don't spread it around, right? Like that. But uh, here in Sacramento, we, we um, you know, we want to be as open as possible. So I'm going to be talking to Rinpoche about, you know, what, when the general public comes in, hopefully newcomers, what, what, can, what can we do, right? Like that. So I think now um, uh, Dr. Rimshay feels some confidence um, in me and us, and, and that we won't totally um, go off the rails. <laughs> so, like that, yeah. Um, uh, you know, so, you know, what, what color chakra practice could be. Um, for the general public. Are, are you interested in that for me to find out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. So my screen here is saying 10% battery remaining, low battery. So You'll make it. You'll make it. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. It's really low. Okay. I just, I hit okay. Yeah. <clears throat> You'll make it. Okay. Are you going to run down? No, no, no we'll, make we'll make it. Thank you. Yeah. So um, in, in teaching and sharing, we always want to, you know, share from a professional point of view, like, you know, what's, what's going to benefit others, not, not be too confusing. Might be a little bit of a stretch, right? Um, you know, just like we're, uh, we're a physician, we're not, you know, just, you know, throwing the Seroquel around, right, you know, or, or the Prozac or whatever, you know, just, okay, here's the right dosage for you, here's the right dosage for you, like that, but that at the same time, we're not, uh, we're not being tight about it. So thank you, Dirk, for speaking up, yeah, I'm, I'm concerned, I don't want, uh, I want people to, because uh, in the past, Kalarimshe gave wonderful color chakra in Boulder, Colorado, and, um, uh, psychiatries and uh, who I've taken uh, uh, different empowerments from uh, also has done Kala Chakra. So um, I, I think that's important to, to recognize, right? So. Okay, good. So we have time for a, a little bit more question before I run out of battery, maybe. <laughs> I will. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. Hey, Lama. I'm really kind of. I'm. I'm really trying to be tech up now. So there's still some tech bugs to work out. I'm sure. Hey, Lama. I've got a question for you. Although I have to joke a little bit, Joe, because um, sometimes uh, uh, people uh, have said, "Oh, Galuk doesn't teach." Um, you know, Mahamudra or Dzogchen, you know. So you know, if someone goes on our website, they, they might just see more like Lam Rim and Tantra level like that. Um, so my teacher used to say, Geshe uh, Lausan Yatsu used to say, um, in our school, we, we teach Mahamudra Dzogchen, we just don't talk about it. But he said, Kargi Enigma, they announce. Now I'm giving a teaching on Mahamudra and Dzogchen, but it's secret. Mm -hmm. So like just teasing like that, right? <laughs> so that's funny. So of course it's self-secret. Like if you don't do the training, if you don't do the practice, then it's not gonna manifest, you know? So uh, impairment a little bit is like someone's, you know, giving you a seed packet at uh, Green Acres, or maybe just a little, you know, little plant but you still have to plant it and water it, right? Like that, so. <laughs> hey, Lamala. All right, Ray, Luntak, good, good uh, reception. Uh, yeah, surprisingly, because my internet is terrible. Yeah. Um, is there any chance that we could schedule a Kala Chakra retreat? Maybe to seal in our uh, Jainong a little bit, just even casually in the evenings next month or so. Yeah, so that's a good idea. So, um, uh, maybe weekend or something like that too. You know, I don't know if we could do it in a weekend, but <laughs> well, start starting. We could start. <laughs> So, so, you know, st still even doing little retreat is kind of like just seeing one gallery at the Louvre, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, from the standpoint of uh, uh, if we can work it out at technologically speaking, then um, retreat, um, uh, Aren't you supposed to be on retreat now? <laughs> you know, so we're, we're, taking we, we're starting preliminaries <laughs> tonight, tomorrow, and then we're yeah. we're starting uh, on the fourteenth. I'm just teasing. Yeah, yeah of course. That's, yeah. That's okay. Um, this is. So, I, have, I have twelve pages just for the preliminaries. Yeah, that's why you know, 
when I found out, I said, I, I'm not coming down for that. <laughs> I'll try, you know, come down for something else. Yeah, it's big. So uh, when when we're just when we're just taking generally with empowerment or even Jinang, you're saying at some point I'm gonna really do a retreat on this, you know. So there are generally retreats of time, you know, retreats of mantra, repetition, retreats of realization, right? So, um, but all those entail commitments where, you know, if we don't, uh, we could take the JNL like this and kind of go, well, I'll, I'll do as much as I can, but we're not saying within this specific time, I'm going to be here doing this many mantras and try to have these realizations, right? That's like retreat. It's kind of like you're saying, okay, now I'm, you know, I'm taking like, I'm going to do the certificate program and compassion, right? There are those now. It's ridiculous in a way, right? You know, it's great. You know, like Kristen Neff, you know, Dr. Smith knows Kristen Neff, you know, so you get certificate, you know, in self-compassion or compassion, but we should be, yes, but which is great, you know, because how to be, you know, how to teach and how to be therapeutic, but, you know, at the same time, we're always saying, well, we're just trying to be compassionate. We're not getting certificate in it, right? But sometimes there is a benefit like a retreat saying, I'm doing this specific thing, you know, for this specific purpose and I'm trying to accomplish this. So compact. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Exactly. So that 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 means something, you know, within a frame of time in a certain place with certain people and accomplishing that. So, uh, you know, certainly I'm up for doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But thank you for that uh, inquiry. So, <clears throat> so um, I just, after everyone's uh, complete with all their questions, and, and I just wanted to uh, mention about the Kala Chakra. Um, movie that that Autumn made. Yeah, are you ready? When, whenever you are. So it's uh, it's about five minutes, or yeah. So we're we're going to watch that um, before we close, you know. But uh, uh, thank you for. Um, so any other questions and comments or complaints? <laughs> yeah. Oh, hi. Ellen, hi. Hi, I had a question. I was Good. hoping you could clarify. I think the Roar said that you'd be teaching on Kala Chakra in the afternoons on Sundays when you're there. Yeah, Is I said I'd do that. There will be a little scheduled and available remotely as well for people or? Uh, yeah, so. Um, I said I'd do that after lunch today, say a little bit more. Or, or the Kala Chakra um, guided tour like that. That's great. So if we're on if we're on the Zoom, do we <clears throat> hang out or? Oh, well, we need a lunch break, you know, so. Right, right. Maybe start at two or something. So um, I'm very interested in, um, you know, uh, Lions are, you know, being like a uh, kind of coordinator and um, collaborator of uh, Kala Chakra practice, you know, because um, I'm very interested in, um, you know, Dalai Lama's vision of Kala Chakra for, you know, for peace, right? So uh, um, I've never met him, but, you know, Andy and, and um, Jam Yang. You know, so uh, that's been really great. And then, uh, so we, we want to increase that network, right? So Ellen's done a lot to, you know, continue that. And um, that's why we need uh, a variety of different times, right? And different uh, traditions to connect like that. The downfall, um, my teacher, Yoshi Losan Gyatso said, the downfall of Tibet is people um, didn't practice together, right? It was too, too sectarian, right? 
So we want to do authentic practice and professional and see how things blend together. Um, and I think we can, we can do it here at this point. So kind of coordinate a little bit. So maybe we can have, you know, outreach to different groups. What do you think that we're doing this? You know, I think it's important. So each, each person has a little different Kala Chakra text and story. And, you know, it's like a restaurant, right? So we don't have to like mix sushi with, you know, lasagna, but, you know, you can still have a restaurant where, you know, one table, they're eating, you know, their gnocchi and the other, they're eating their roast beef and the other, they're having their sushi, right? Restaurant. What do you think, Alan? Can we do it? I think so. In fact, it reminds me that um, we've just had a couple of people join our Wednesday group lately from South America. Um, yeah, good. And one of them has been doing the sadna in Spanish. Yeah, that's but great. She, she translated it back to English, and it's almost exactly the sadna we're, we're, we got from Jadaram Pache 10 years ago. So I mean, it just this yeah. experience of doing Kala Chakra in different places, especially since COVID has made me feel like yeah. it's much more connected than you than you tend to realize. Yeah, yeah. So we get discouraged when we think, okay, the, the jerks are winning. The jerks always seem kind of coordinated, right? So, <laughs> so you know, you know, we're promoting we, we do have an agenda. We're promoting, you know, bodhicitta. So, um, you know, that, that way, the more we make these connections, and that's going to take some administrative um, uh, expertise too, right? So um, I'll just put, put out a little um, uh, invitation. Like, I'm, I'm really interested in um, finding a person who can be like our a membership coordinator. So um, this is someone who uh, you know can can keep track of like registration and people's emails and where they live and what they're doing and you know so like for the recent Jnan like you know like we can send out saying hey we're doing this are you still interested and you're going to do this online we're going to do this retreat we're going to do this Sunday afternoons or Wednesday afternoons or Monday evenings or something and are you interested so that's a membership coordinator so not just seeing if people are paying their dues <laughs> but like that and it takes that combination of extroverted friendly skills with a certain level of geekness don't you think <laughs> like that but that that's really important you think we can do it? Raise your hand. Yeah, yeah, good. Thanks. <laughs> I got the hand raising thing from Trung Parimshe. So uh, in 1975, uh, this is Naropa's second year, and uh, everyone was, it was broke. There was a big 74, Ram Das was there. We all like, like Ram Das, right? And, and then it dropped off, you know, you know how that works, you know, because it was big and then trying to make it a continual college. So it's almost broke. And then <laughs> she does at a big meeting said, uh, Sangmi says, well, you know, do you guys want to see this place fail? You know, who, you know, so he just said, raise your hand. It was the weirdest thing because no Tibetan teacher ever, ever said like, well, just raise your hand if you're interested. So that's, I like that. Okay, so uh, uh, Elena, you and I can talk some more about coordination, okay? So, we, you know, we can reach out to uh, London and reach out to Kentor and Bache, um, and I would like to reach out to Nagar Nyingma. What are they doing, you know? It's like, so, um, because Pema Narbu Rimshe, Pena Rimshe gave Kala Chakra several times, I think, you know? See what's going on, don't you think? Yeah, okay. Are we ready to roll the, the video?
Hello. So um, this is a short film about five, six minutes long about the Kalachakra mural. And I filmed it, you know, here and there over the last two years. And I really have to thank uh, Patty and Lama for making sure that I was aware when these moments were occurring so that I could be there. So um, I just kind of followed Lama's vision on this, which is really wonderful um, because the, the mural is absolutely beautiful in its completion, but it really was a process to get it to this state. And there's, um, it was built layer upon layer. And the only way to show that was to kind of document how it was created. So I feel really humbled and grateful that I was able to document that and be able to show it back to you at the end of the day so that we can both see the mural completed and also have a document of how it was created. So that is all.
Ja. Yeah, you like the transmission is a little choppy because of the Zoom having a hard time with the video, but the link is going to be shared with everyone. So I'm glad that we were able to share it. So the video is a little choppy because of Zoom playing back videos, but still glad that we could share it, watch it together. Um, but the link will be shared publicly so that you guys can watch it in the more smooth version on your own. I also have a, a short announcement that's related. The artist who did the top part of the mural, Johnny Knudsen, is actually having an art show today at the, where Floppies used to be, the coffee mm. center on J. And another Sangha friend, Clamon, is doing music at the art show. Aww. Ah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whole weekend, the whole visit with Jada Rimshe was incredible for me and um, it continues with Geshe Tashi and Gampo and Balsa and Geshe to be um, incredibly supportive. So I want to be able to, in 2022, uh, <laughs> we need to start like opening up. Uh, um, uh, I don't know as of this very date what the Sac County Health Department is saying as far as like um masking and indoor services maybe andrew you could check into that for me you know like at some point you know we're gonna have to have non-refuge students come in it, you know i'd like people to be vaccinated and maybe they need to be masked or not legally we'll follow whatever the guidelines are but we need to open up right and we need to talk with uh, jada rimshay it's like well, what what would you know, if we just want to include some Kalachakras just part of public service, what, what would he advise? You know, that would be a good question to ask. Um, we, we have some bugs to work out with the IT. Uh, we may not have been able, we may not have recorded Friday or Saturday. <laughs> so uh, I'm still looking into that, you know, as far as Seems it looks like we and something didn't happen, like little red button didn't oh. get pushed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but some people took notes, and we can put the notes together. But um, now I'm at five percent. Our Apple products are working very well. Um, so, um, but I, you know, what I wanted to do, or I wanted to have it recorded, obviously as an archive and people to watch again, but also for us to do a transcription from and then put in booklet, like something we did for Arjun Rinpoche and you know, teachings on the Heart Sutra. So uh, I, I'm hearing from people before I call Rob Best, because uh, we're paying them a lot of money. Um, so you know, we'll, we'll work that out. And you know, we probably need some ongoing mentoring too, right? So we want to do that because we're, you know, we're truly international now, right? It's kind of exciting. But that's a little disappointing. I was kind of like, mm. <laughs> maybe it's hidden somewhere, you know? Maybe it's hidden, but sometimes it's not, you know? But of course, Buddha Dharma survived without recording for 2,500 years, you know? It's not, not the end of the world, but, um, uh, you know, to be able to transcribe it, kind of like Jada Rimshay's transcription um, talk in the Burson archives, you know, it's nice. And then it's nice to present a teacher with, okay, here's, we put this together for you, right? 
like that. We may have we may have Sunday. We may have Sunday, and then we can do that. So I need. We to definitely have that. Sunday. We yeah we do okay good yeah. yeah in English and in Mongolian. Any what? In English and in Mongolian. Okay, good. Yeah, so um, you know, putting that together would be good. So we'll 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 work on it. Oh my, oh, great. Oh, oh, oh. So, but it's really important. I um, I didn't ask for uh about you know public teachings. Those haven't had impairment or Jainan. You know what 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 kind of color chalk could we share? I want to do that because people will say, well, what, what do you do with all this artwork, right? What do you what do you guys do here? Oh, we just said, but you know, we do do more than that, right? Okay. All right, so now we need to do um, closing. Through the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of Guru Buddha and lead all, all living beings without, without exception into that enlightened, enlightened state. state. May the supreme jewel Bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may and that which has arisen, arisen not, not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful generous Tenzin Yatso. Please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish. May the May upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all my creators achieve happiness and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Low song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire samaras, Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowman sages, Losandrapa, and make request at your holy feet. Okay. So, we're going to have like lunch break, right? Um, yeah, good. Mm. Yeah, what? So um, on Sunday, next Sunday, um, if, if you get it, uh, inspiration within yourself, we would like to uh, Kind of collect some cookies to distribute to our neighborhood to our neighbors you know just whatever we have it's just going to be just right and we'll just buy whatever's brought to us on sunday and um some of you can help us do that that'd be fun and then we'll give them to our neighbors sort of like a thank you for them uh, being such good neighbors to us and um so that's just uh if you'd like to participate that'd be wonderful thank you good idea Lama, are we coming back to this link at two? Your time? Hello. <laughs>
کے لیے اپنے والدین کے ساتھ